And I think the main thing all my coaches have kind of helped me with is to kind of find my way of doing things. Um, and it's so easy to get thrown off that track. Like I've so many times I'm like, I feel like I should do this, do this, do this. Hello everybody and thank you for joining the Top Golf Podcast. Today I'm joined by my fellow co-host Ken Belanger. Welcome. And Ladies European Tour player Tonya Daffenrood. Welcome Tonya. Thank you. Just before we get going into a deep dive conversation with Tonya on her career so far uh, in the professional ladies game, we'd like to just uh, give you a little bit of her background and her achievements so far. Tonya has won national titles as a junior and senior in Norway, so junior national champion and senior national champion. She has represented the Junior Solheim Cup in 2009. Super awesome achievement, well done. Uh, she attended Denver University and she then came back and started her professional career and she has gone through the ranks earning her stripes as a ladies European tour player. She started in Nordic League Ladies European Tour Access, which is a lower level tour that gets you onto the ladies European tour. And she is now a well-established ladies European tour player. She has five victories to her name and she is in line to go to the Olympics in July 2021. And we'll come back to that. So, Tonya, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, a strange year for everybody. Well, I can't imagine what it must have been like to be a, a tour player earlier on in the year and lose the rights to play the game and take away the rights to earn some money. So, how has it been for you? Um, well, yeah, for sure. Like you say, it's been a crazy year. Um, did not anticipate this at all, beginning mm. of the year. We, we went to Australia like we always do in February and we started get, getting news about Corona when we were there. Um, I remember I was like, am I going to be able to get home? Um, and I did and then I think it, it was like a week and then everything was cancelled from then onwards. Um, so for a while there I had no idea what to do. Mm. I couldn't even practice because it was an open home and um, I started looking at options and figure out it might be a good time to, to do, get a job, do something okay, else. Cool. Yeah. So what did you do? Well, I, uh, you guys know, I, I was a, uh, a teaching pro cool. um, and worked at a club just over the street and uh, seen you guys every day and tried, uh, tried to learn uh, or kind of uh, uh, teach what I've picked up over the years. Mm. Um, I guess it's a bit different from normal pros, but, um, but I really enjoyed it. It's mm. different. Mm. So you became a, a teaching professional. What did you coach to the people you taught? Well, um, I, I think my kind of view is that a lot of players, especially amateur players, get kind of stuck on the range. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to get people to find a way to play your game out on the course. Um, and there's so many ways to do that, not getting too technical and be like super careful with your swing. Like obviously you need the basics and a lot of amateur golfers don't have that. So you have to start there. But eventually I wanted to kind of teach I've learned so much from my mental coaches over the years and mm. I use that as a big part of my preparations and how I perform. Um, so I wanted to kind of give the people who came to me a bit of a different uh, approach, Approach, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, can you share with us what you learned from your mental coaches then? Anything in particular that our viewers could learn from and implement into their game into 2021? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, over the years, it's been quite a lot. But this year, for me, it's been... I started a project of hitting as far as I could, kind of a Bryson thing, earlier um, of the year, um, before Christmas last year. And I, I was 100% committed to that. Um, and when we started playing tournaments again, I hit the ball further, but I... I spread it like I hit it wow. everywhere. All over the place, yeah. yeah, and for me, my my control of the ball, my ball striking has always been my my strength. Mm. So for me to lose uh, direction, it, it took away my whole game. So I had in that case, this was just after British Open this year. I came, I think I came dead last. Mm. We played true, and it was horrible conditions. I was obviously excited to play the Open, mm. but but um, I just lost it. I had no clue where the ball was going. Um, and after that was kind of a breakthrough for me. I had to kind of look at everything, especially my mental game. How am I going to find my way back kind of a thing? And I had to kind of resettle, get back to basics. And a lot of that for me is preparations, how you prepare your mind, how, how many situations out on the course can I actually prepare for? If I have this shot, if I have this shot, how is my mindset going to be? And especially my pre-shot. So we work a lot on doing 
all the work I can before the first tee shot on Thursday. Mm. When when I'm there, the job's done. Mm. Then I can just kind of enjoy late. myself and play golf, yeah. and mm. and that's always my goal, to to give it everything I have in 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 the technique, uh, physical, technical, do everything before Thursday, um, before my first tee shot. Then I can just relax. Fantastic. What do you think about Bryson then and, and what he's done and versus what you said? Is he going to take everybody away from where they should be? Is he going to hurt more than he helps in that theory, do you think? No, I think what he's doing is absolutely awesome. Like, I think it's so impressive. And just because I tried it so many times myself to really kind of get that breakthrough with distance. And I keep on kind of, I guess, pulling the brakes on it because I can't find the control when I do it. Mm. Uh, and for him to actually get the distance he, he gets this quickly and then I mean, he's spreading it a Still bit more, but he can play with accurate, it. Yeah. I mean, mm. yeah, it's uh, it's. I think it's kind of the future, mm. but I don't think it's for everyone. No. I think especially when you're at a certain level, I think juniors have to kind of push that mm. um, goal for distance. But I'm kind of not a junior anymore, and I know my strength. And and if I risk all of my strengths, I don't think I can play golf. Mm. That's why I want to ask, though, after the Open, what did happen because you kind of hit the wall so to say yeah so if you're like okay going for distance didn't really work out this time yeah. am i going to keep on pushing that road or you have to get back and really remap the whole thing what yeah. did you do well um i it was kind of that that question came up in my mind way before they opened because yeah. i knew i wasn't playing well all summer mm. we had some national events at home and and obviously i wanted to do well but i knew my game wasn't there yet but i kept me and my team we kept on like eye on the goal and the goal was distance so i kind of accepted for a long time that i was going to spread it a bit more uh, but after the open that's when i kind of for me it was like a turning point like okay this is not working like i have to to kind of sit back and and reevaluate because um because olympics is coming up and yeah. and that's been my main goal for so many years and this project was to prepare for the olympics so in a way i'm almost happy that it got postponed because now I'm like back to my way of doing things. Mm. Um, and I think in golf, and I've been out on tour for six years, you keep you keep trying to find all these little things, but sometimes you go too far and then you have to get back on track and then find a new way to, to get better. Mm. That's, that's kind of our life. We always try to find things that makes us better, but it doesn't work every time. Mm. Are you still working on it, the distance? Yeah, I do, but more like... Um, lower down the line priority i, I want to I, I i decided after the open that i'm going to be awesome at the things i'm already good at and that's kind of more the approach instead of pushing all the parts that have always been mm. a challenge for mm. me so so it's there but it's it's there in my physical training so mm. i have the same program as i had all year with kind of getting stronger and and gaining more speed but when i'm on the golf course I, I don't care about the distance. Keep your game as it was. Mm. Yeah, yeah mm. I, I wanna I wanna get back to kind of knowing where the ball is going. <laughs> so <laughs> still know. There's still something in that for everybody. <laughs> just is. play to your strengths. Yeah. Just keep working yeah. on the stuff you're good at. And so, what about um, how do you implement that? Then are you working on that every day in the gym, or is it so many um, times a week you in, incorporate yeah, it? Yeah, we we have my minimum is like three times a week. But this year, it's, I mean, all the gyms are closed. Um, I, I've been in quarantine like six times. Mm. Um, most of it has been home on like a yoga mat with, with bands. Like I don't have a deadlift weight in my living room. So, so I had to get really creative this year to just kind of um, maintain or maintain the, that part of the game. And it's been tough, I think, because mm. um, I've been working at Olympia, um, Olympia Open quite a lot. Um, but now I've been quarantined. So it's been and traveling. The gym gyms have not been open, not in our hotel or the courses. So that's, I'm, I guess, one of the biggest challenges this year, um, mm. getting actually to find weights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So are you using the speed sticks or anything like that to help you or? Um, for, I did for a while, but um, that for me is more like a warm up to kind of wake up my body a bit. Mm -hmm. So I have a speed stick that I kind of really just rip to, to get my body going, but I don't, I haven't used the actual system. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So being a coach that you've been a little bit, how many, couple of months? Couple of months there you coached, didn't you? Yeah, I, I think I started in 
April, June. Yeah. Um, and coach throughout. We we started again, so I guess until September ish. Okay, you've August. coached all yeah. the way through, yeah. Yeah, with but a little I, bit I mean, of playing in the middle there. I guess like thirty percent. Okay, cool. Like, so, so if so, we've got so like a, the whole time. yeah, if we have a normal golfer mm. and you've been coaching them, mm. so take that information because that's what everybody's coming here for. Mm. They yep. want to play better golf and they want to hit it further. Yeah. And everybody's after that right now. Yeah. Uh, and what I was saying before is that going to hurt more than it helps. Um, at, at this level, mm. how did you recommend your golfers to work on their mental game and their physical game? Then, what did you tell them to do? Um, well, I, I started with like when I meet, met golfers, I always started meeting them on the range. Mm. So I, I got like a technical insight in what where they can gain some. And I, I think a lot of um, amateur golfers, the, the kind of Similar, similar thing between everyone is is so much arms, no body, mm. and then and they don't really turn, um, they don't use the whole extension, especially on the backswing. So I think just that is like two things that's easy to kind of work on mm. when it comes to distance, um, and then I think mental game. I I took a lot of them out on the course, so we did some different things, but I think. Uh, Main thing is like even I tell my dad this like whenever he comes to to a dogleg hole or whatever, you see the hazards, you see the water, you see the red stakes and yeah. and and from I was a junior, I've always been so careful with the information I kind of take in. Like some some courses I can play for four days and I don't even know where the out of bounces are, and and I hear especially men players because you hit it further you kind of know that you map out a little bit more yeah, yeah. like mm. it's it's a big part of the preparations and i honestly don't even and i think maybe that's weird i, I'm, I might be the there. weird one but, <laughs> but i just think it's so important what you kind of give your brain and it's it's not like that you can't just tell yourself not to see it but it's just about the focus where you actually want to give your attention um and what was the last thing physical yeah how yeah because they obviously asked you how do yeah. I hit the ball further yeah hmm. was it as simple as just hit the middle of the club face or did you give them more physical work to do as well um I didn't really get into that with them um because a lot of them I guess are not that determined to you know hmm. put that much into it hmm. um so I, I I definitely worked a lot on the bigger bigger movements and hmm. use your body more than your arms um and then we did some I definitely took some driver classes where I kind of showed them the, the, the super speed sticks and how to kind of just get after it and release a bit more hmm. um, but not as much physical hmm. uh, I think yeah so having had that experience this summer which was interesting to be a, a tournament player not really yeah. coached before maybe you've helped a few young kids along the way yeah to now have coached could you coach yourself as a European tour player do you think um I know some do it, but I I need that perspective. And sometimes you get so caught up in your own little bubble that I, I don't think I could do it. Because sometimes I I mean that's what I use my use my coach for is kind of just I need someone to ask the right questions sometimes, and mm. you can't always be that person. And, and also just st strategy technique is one part, but. There's a whole other aspect to being a coach on tour, like tournament uh, planning, like what, what should I play? Like we, he's much bigger role than just the technique. So he's a mentor as well then? Yeah, of, I would say uh, so. Mentor. Like a guy, like uh, he's kind of a, a person that can kind of guide me in the right direction. Hmm. He's also my technique coach, but I don't think I could ever do all that myself. And I think it's easier to do it with one more brain mm. like I don't know everything <laughs> mm. like I, I need and I'm very much of a feel player mm. uh, I, I I use a lot of swing feels and not as much positions like that's how I think mm. so so when I kind of started coaching I got way into mm. way more into the positions, positions yeah. mm. and that gave me kind of a different mindset and then I guess the kind of geek in me appeared like I love little details and numbers mm. and I've always used, tra used trackman so um, I think I've learned a lot from it. Mm. It's been fun. How was that being a player then? Do you think that affected you? Um, Having all the information or digging deeper into the technique yes, side of things? After I kind of coached, I was like, maybe I'm getting a bit too technical now because I'm not very technical to begin with. Mm. Um, I do drills and that's it. I, I really keep my focus out 
by the flag and not very much um, by the ball. Mm. So, so I definitely, I, in retrospect, I think I wasn't really cautious with that. Like I got very like videos and trackman, and and I thought it, it was great fun to kind of really understand it all. And mm. I always have like I've used trackman since uh, since I was a kid, but. At the same time, the focus changed a bit. Yeah. So, uh, so I think that's been a big change. Mm. Yeah. Mm. When did you start playing? Um, when I was ten years old. Ten years. So mm. you've been in the game a long time. Yeah. You must have worked with quite a few coaches over that period. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you can say that any of the coaches that you've worked with has helped you with? Anything you can pinpoint and share? Uh, oh my God, that's a lot, I think. That's a big question. That's yeah. a big question. Um, well, to be honest, I worked with, I guess, three swing coaches on that many, in that many years. So mm. I haven't changed swing coaches a lot. I think Jonas and me, who's my coach now, we work together for over 10 years, like 13 or something. Mm. So, Jonas is national coach, for Yeah. people who don't know that. Yeah, he yeah. is. Mm. Um, but uh, physical and mental coaches have switched around a bit. Mm. Um, but it's it's a that's a big question. Um, I think all my coaches have brought something to the table at different times. Like what I need now is very different to what I needed in college um, or in my junior career. But I think um, golf is such a big sport, so it's so easy to kind of follow people mm. that you like and mm. be like be inspired, but also kind of just copy. And I think the main thing all my coaches have kind of helped me with is to kind of find my way of doing things. Um, and it's so easy to get thrown off that track. Like I've so many times I'm like, I feel like I should do this, or do this, do this, because everyone else is doing it. It's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. even like now, like, like the yeah, thing. like the distance yeah. thing. Mm. Um, and even now, like I'm 29 years old and I still get caught in that kind of trap. So just to really I'm glad kind you said how old you were. Way. I didn't want to ask yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say how, I was I trying really to work out how many years you've been playing for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so thanks for giving that away. Cool. So um, what? who and got you in the game and where did you start your your junior career? You were you were a bit south of Oslo, weren't you? Yeah. Mm, so I'm from a city called uh, Tunsberg. It's only an hour and, hour and a half from here. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to talking this much. <laughs> um, yeah, so I started at Vestival Golf Club when I was 10. I did all kinds of sports. I always, I love sports, whatever it is. I love to follow, I love to watch. And um, my dad and my cousin took me when I was 10. And I think it's because it was an individual sport. I only did team sports at the time. Um, I just got hooked, hmm. really did. Um, I think I, I started when I was 10 and I played national events when I was 13 and and I, I developed pretty quickly to be one of the best in Norway so um, it was just a great fit for me mm. I just loved all the details or love all the details there's so much to to kind of work on <clears throat> mm. so as a junior did you play more than you practice or were you a bit of a range rat or oh I definitely played you did yeah you played I, a lot of golf. yeah a lot mm. and I played a lot of rounds at night with my dad and um, they my mom would just kind of drop me at the golf course mm. pick me up whenever she came back from work <clears throat> and I would just hang out there every day play play a lot I I, I kind of always loved the competition side of it mm. I've never been one that kind of loves the practice part that's mm. kind of something i know i need to do and mm. need to do to get better yeah. um but the competition and, <laughs> and playing and it's always been kind of why i picked golf and picked mm. i guess a sport as my job yeah. mm. so what do you do actually because loving competition side of it mm. how do you keep that motivation up mm. during this time the winter yeah. for example yeah, yeah well for me, I think uh, that's one of the reasons why I had to get a job, like mostly economical wise, yeah. like I had to earn money. But I also didn't want to be stuck for six months only practicing. Like for me, that's death. <laughs> like I Torture. Need, yeah, I need to have something to prepare for. Yeah. I need a tournament to kind of uh, have in, in the distance. And when everything was closed, I, I just knew I had to do something because I couldn't be practicing no for 12 hours a day like come I mean, back to mm -hmm. yeah so so the balance part has always been super important for me to to kind of 
that's how I stay motivated to to balance it out. If I if I'm a golfer, or if I only play golf every hour of the day, I I, I would <laughs> quit. I think like yeah. you, that's just me. I, I can't. I'm not one of those who get stuck on the range. Like no. I do what I need to do, and and I have a lot of competitions with myself when I practice. Yeah, it's a great way to do it. Yeah, but that's different for everyone. Mm. It really is. Interesting stuff. And mm. you know, when you were a junior and you played a lot of golf, did you play against people that were better with than you, or were you the best player in the club? Or did you have a lot of good am young amateurs around you? Um, well, I only uh, when I was a junior, I always uh, only practiced with the with the guys. Mm. Uh, there were no real. There's on, almost only me, and a few other older girls uh, that I kind of play with a little bit. But but uh, when I was uh, Getting into it, I, I just practice with my cousins and and other guys, um, mm. and I think that just kind of already, I shouldn't say it, but I mean I, that already kind of it kicked me a bit further because I I kind of competed against them right off the bat. Mm. Um, they did hit it further than me, but I still beat some of them. Mm. Um, so so I I was quite alone I think when I started like none none of my friends from school. Mm. Um, actually play golf. It was kind of a random thing for me to get into, but uh, but I've never been afraid to be kind of by myself. I kind of loved. That's the life in a way. Yeah. Mm. Sort of down the road. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Talk you play have your to. Life. Yeah. yeah. Play life. So how like if you're playing tournaments now, you said you're not really want to practice that much. So what do you do to switch off when you're on the road or? Um, well, I, d I definitely practice. I, I kind of do what I need to do and then. Um, I, I switch off by watching Netflix or reading a book, mm. um, podcasts, um, the gym, so just normal boring stuff. Mm. Um, and and when especially it's different when I'm home because then I have time to see my friends, do other things. But when I'm on the road, um, a big part of it too is to kind of rest up and and get your body ready for like five weeks in a row. Mm. So so that's I mean you have to kind of. It's part of the part of the life as well to mm. just lie in bed and watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Like mm. it really is. Mm. You can't keep that practice amount up for five weeks straight. You'll mm. be you'll be injured. Mm. Mm. What do you think of the strength and depth in the ladies' junior game mm. in Norway? What's your opinion about that? Um, well, I think it's it's um, it's like throughout my career, it's been like this. Mm. Um, We've always had a few stars like coming up and 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 um, and kind of winning tournaments and stuff. And I think the main thing is to to get out in Europe and get to the states and really compete against the top level. Mm. Um, that's been a main thing for me at least. And I think it's awesome to see. I I think it's this next this generation um, that graduates from college mm. now. I think there's a lot of really good players. Mm. Um, and just to see that there's more than one or two mm. that can actually go and make it on tour. Because um, it really isn't that big of a deal to, to go from college to, especially the latest European tour. Mm. Um, it's not that scary. And I think it's great to see how many more girls we have in that position mm. that can actually take that step quite easily. Mm. Um, so um, so it's it's fun to see, and I think what Victor is doing as well is just giving boys and girls yeah, else, in yeah. Norway just this awesome mm -hmm. inspiration. Belief, yeah. Impossible. Yeah. What stops them making that step, do you think? Because obviously I can think of a few players in the last few years that have done quite well and then their progress yeah. has stopped. Yeah. Anything you can see in them that... Well, I, I think when, you, when you're a junior and an um, amateur golfer, you, you get kind of... Uh, someone just pulls you up and you can you can just go along for the ride mm. if you're good enough you can just kind of tag along like mm. you don't really have to do a whole lot yourself like the federation really takes care of you mm. uh, but when the day you turn professional you're kind of by yourself you have to get sponsors you have to do travels you have to plan you have to do the whole year there's a whole it's a whole other lifestyle and I think that motivation to live that life with mm. golf, mm. I think it's a different thing than loving amateur golf or junior mm. golf. Um, and I think that's why people, some, that's not for everyone. No. I do think that could scare some people. Do you think that's maybe, hypothetically, maybe crippling if you get pushed 
so much that it's a yeah. big switch yeah. all of a sudden. There's no transition in a way. Yeah, so. well, I think the idea is to prepare yeah. everyone for tour life because, I mean, I have, I've joined some team Norway camps with the juniors when we were in Spain at the same time and they play and practice the whole, like they play practice so much like it's wonderful yeah. but there's a downside to that you get injuries and and you don't really learn how to practice smart i think mm. that's more important than just standing there over the ball hitting 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 mm. um so i think maybe it could be crippling but i think the the players who are actually going to make it anyway they are going to make it yep. like you can't really you can try to make more people kind of Join enter in. the yeah. game, but the people who actually wants to live that life and, and love love golf the way you have to do to play tournament golf, they're going to end up there anyway, I mm. think. Mm. Um, I just think it's less people here or juniors here in than in other countries because we're in Norway. And yeah, I mean, it, I haven't seen the sun <laughs> since I came back home. So, and I've been home for three well, weeks. I think I've been, what, five hours of sun in December? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> so, so I, I don't blame anyone, but, no. but it's a fine balance. Yeah. You so don't want to like... Maybe a better transition. Yeah. Hmm. You have to kind of do the work yourself and you, you should also learn that when you were really young. Hmm. So what you're saying is it's not really their golfing skill that might stop them making it. It's all the other things that go along with I the think pressures so. of being a yeah. tour player. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Because everybody looks at them like they're not good enough to make it, but yeah. they're obviously yeah. very, very good enough. There's a couple recently yeah. that should have yeah, kept going. Like the sort of level of down. golf they've delivered, the yeah. pedigree has been mm. really high. Mm. Yeah. But what happened? Yeah. So is that what's happening then in the camp? So are, are the younger kids being coached to practice less but smarter? Are they being uh, schooled in how to turn up to a tournament, how to prepare, how to spend their time, when to rest? Is that is that something that could be introduced better or do you think? Well, honestly, I'm, I'm not in... I don't have enough insight to mm. know the whole mm. plan, but what I've seen, it's it's really impressive. Mm. They they do push them pretty hard mm. when it comes to amount of hours, uh, but if you, if you can take that when you're like 14, 15, and everyone else is partying, then mm. then you yeah. might make it. So I, I I can't really speak to that. I mm. think what I've seen, it's impressive. They they kind of live as professional athletes already mm. on on their camps, but I mean. I remember we did that as well. Like when we were at camps, that's all we did. We mm. practiced, and but but there's a fine balance to learning how to be independent in mm. in your golf game and kind of have your own ownership. If if you always have someone to tell you what to do, I think mm. at the end of the day you're not gonna know. You don't have any direction. You don't have a compass of choosing your next step because someone has always told you what to do mm. yeah, so I, I think that that's road. yeah mm -hmm. and I think that's the, the key the best players in the world they, they own their shit like they mm. know what to do and mm. no one can tell them anything no. it's their choice they, they pick up their help the help they need mm. um, I think that's the only way to succeed mm. no one's gonna like push you all the mm. way so back to Tonya what's possible for you do you think are you willing to share that with us? What What's your ambition within the game now? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm definitely willing. Um, Olympics is obviously a big, big thing for me. Um, so you're in the team? Yeah. And are, you, are you in? Are you in the Olympics? Well, is your ranking it's, it's good enough? Just, I was in this year, mm. but now the whole qualification thing is obviously extended one year. So you have to be um, within top 400 in the world and top two best in the country to go. So yeah. now I'm I'm in. It's Fantastic. me and, and Marianne, yep. um, but obviously the, the whole qualification extended, so I just have to keep, mm. you know, fighting up. for it. And, and uh, it's not it's not given yet, for sure. Mm. I have to keep working to, to get that spot. But um, but uh, my main goal is to, I've, I've been back and forth between LPGA and LAT when it comes to what I wanted, where I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've gone to Q school in the States three times and I never, never really felt like I wanted it enough. Um, so I've really, after this last time, I've decided that what I, I, I need to be more in contention on the European tour. I haven't really been much in contention. I have quite a few top tens, but um, I need to kind of take that last step before I see myself ready to kind of go to the States. Mm. So so my main, my main goals are quite um, 
they're not like 10 years ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to win on the LAT mm -hmm. and I want to get to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just be in contention and keep playing uh, against the best. I think that's, that's my main goal, mm -hmm. to just keep competing and, and try to get better every mm -hmm. day. Is there a difference between winning on a low level tour and winning on the ladies European tour, do you think? Or is it just a matter of getting it done? Uh, I think it's a matter of getting it done. <laughs> I mean, there's less good players, obviously, on the low level tours, mm. tours but um, but I think the winning scores wouldn't be a whole lot different if it, if it was an LAT event. Mm. Um, it's just the mindset. Like, when I obviously have a few wins on Axis and it's um, it's a different mindset and I, and I work to get that mindset on the LAT, just that relaxed state of just true confidence, like I knew I could do it um, even before the first shot. Mm. And, um, and the, the plan is obviously to, to have that feeling out on the LAT. Mm. And, and I, I, I feel like I'm close, but I need to just get that last, just, to, just get it done. Mm. Like you're saying, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of things that have to Go right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Sounds like a very smart way to to sort of say to yourself, isn't it? Like, okay, I've got to win on this level before I go to that level, and when I do that, I can then head to the LPGA and yeah. give that a really good run, knowing that I'm a tournament winner. I know I'm good enough to compete yeah. on this tour. Yeah. But what about the Danish girl then, Emily Christine Pedersen? Yeah. She's been pretty phenomenal. The last four, did she win three of the four or four of the four? Three of the four. Mm -hmm. Three of the four last events. Yeah. And what's 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 her secret? Mm -hmm. Well, it's she's. Uh, I stay with her in Dubai before she won. Like she, she finished not that good in Dubai, but she won the last three after that. Mm. Uh, so we're great friends, and um, to see the struggle she's been through, because mm. she's obviously she played Solan Cup, was it 2016 uh, or 17, um, and she went into a big mess after that. She uh, she barely broke 80. Uh, for two years and then this year she just found her game and you see her confidence you see she enjoys it a whole lot more um, but I mean there's no fault to her game right now I've, I've played with her uh, obviously we practice together in Dubai and her ball striking is just so impressive mm. like um, she has no faults right now like when when her game is like this mm. so um, does she get onto the LPJ with all these results or does she have to qualify as well? Well, she, she did get into the US Open. That was mm. just now last week. Um, and I think she's gotten a few invites, but she's been she's been on the LPJ two years ago. Mm. I think she had probably has um, a conditional status this year. So I think she'll get back to the LPJ for sure. Mm. Um, but she has to go through Q school, I think. Mm. Yeah, no, she's impressive. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. What do you think of your game compared to hers then when you see a good friend of yours, you've obviously mm. practiced and played practice rounds with her all every week the last yeah. few weeks. Yeah. What do you think when you see that? I can do it or is that what you're thinking? Um You can do the same. Yes. I, I think when it comes to turning things around and see how she's playing now and compared to just a year ago, mm. um you can definitely feel like this is so close to just kinda of turning and you know, you, you kinda of get on a streak but um, but also just her ball striking is, um, it's so st stable, like it, she hits it, she hits it so many more good golf shots than me right now. Like I, I hit decent golf shots, but it's just the consistency of it all mm. um, that really plays the big difference, I think. Um, and obviously her short game is on spot when you win three in a row. <laughs> Um, mm. does make it easier. Mm -hmm. but, it's impressive, isn't it? Consistency mm. in yeah. ball tracking. Mm. Not yeah, really and like especially how high it is, but if you are doing the same thing every single time. Yes, yeah. and that's what she's scary. doing right now. Mm. And just to find that is is kind of the key to everything, I think. Can it be taught or is it only learned? <laughs> 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 Repetitions, right? It's too big of a question. You always need a golf cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hit the middle. Um, yeah. Hit the middle. Okay, cool. That's interesting, isn't it? What about her then? Is she in the gym? Is she eating well? Is she Is she mentally... Uh, working on her mental skills as well. Is she doing all the yeah? All she's the aspects? De definitely a very determined player. Um, I think she switched her mental coach before all this, so that's obviously worked out. She works hard in the gym. Uh, she hits it miles. She yeah. really does. But her ball striking, even though she hits it miles, she it's, she's so straight. Mm. Um, it's very impressive to see. Mm. 
but she's worked her ass off and uh, and to come back from where she was two years ago it's just mm. it's awesome mm. to see resilience yeah absolutely <laughs> is she living in Denmark the weather's slightly different is it I think it is I think they can still play Warmer. inside a little yeah, bit yeah they, they usually can't play all year she, she yeah. I think she she's based in Copenhagen but she's okay. uh in the States. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What's your plan now over the next few months? And when's the next tournament? And how will you spend the winter months? Um, well, so far in here, uh, cool. I guess. Mm. There's, uh, everything's closed, you know. Mm. So just the opportunity to be practicing here is, is awesome. Because mm. um, it's frightening to see <laughs> what I'm going to do <laughs> this winter. Mm. I always go to Spain. And I don't know if that's possible yet. But I'm looking at going in, going to Spain in January for practice. And then... Uh, we have our first tournament in Kenya in February, so we get started pretty early. Mm. Um, and then we have, I think, South Africa and Philippines, mm. and then we go. We start in Europe in April, mm. like for real. So. Um, so not long then, not long to no, wait. No. So no. what will you do? Will you will you practice uh, your golf swing every day? Will you see your coach each day? How how do you do it? Um, well, now until Christmas, I'm gonna kind of keep at it. Mm. Um, and then um, I always have a dialogue with my coach, but we have to kind of, uh, we always sit down and evaluate the year and, and kind of come up with the plan for the next um, next few months. We always kind of break up our plan for like three months ahead, just t- try to work on different aspects of the game in those in that period. Um, so that that's kind of the main part of, of my winter season is kind of evaluating and then and pinpoint where do we go from here? What's the goal for next year? Do all the kind of paperwork when it comes to a season mm. and what was good, what was not good, look at the stats. Mm. Um, and then um, I'm going to keep working in here. Uh, mm. And, and wh- whenever there's, it, whenever I practice indoors, it's going to be kind of technique, yeah. um, basics really. Mm. Uh, just keep my base- basics good. And mm. then you can't really, I don't like to work a whole lot of, well, you can't really work on your ball shaping mm. inside, mm. Uh, which I usually kind of do outside mm. quite a lot. So uh, it will be kind of um, a lot of basics. Which Maintenance I, work? Much. Yeah, yeah, you can call it that for sure. Um, I think that's kind of the smartest thing to do when you're inside, mm. like we have to be right now. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else you're interested in? Are you studying at, this, at the moment as well? Or? Uh, no, not right now. I did a, I did a course um, that I finished two years ago. Um, so no, uh, I've been obviously working and then uh, now I'm back to 100% playing golf. Mm. We'll see what next year looks like, but um, boy, that's kind of my focus. Mm. Um, and I also got a puppy, so that oh, takes yeah. most of my time right sure. now. Cool. Uh, so you're walking him around yeah, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it takes, uh, takes uh, a lot of time, but uh, yeah, mm. it's, that's uh, just amazing mm. to kind of have something else to focus on than myself. You get pretty self-absorbed when you're mm. a golfer mm. what about victor what do you think about him at the moment and what he's achieving within the game anything you can learn from him i think about everything <laughs> ice being inspiration. ice cool yeah. our boys ice cool. yeah he's just um i think he's just unbelievable mm. and i think even not from for for being in the region yes but also just being a golfer mm. like what he's doing on tour, like he's breaking all these long time records all the time. Mm. He's f- like what, 14th yeah. in the world right yeah. now? I nearly won last week. Yeah. yeah. Back to back. He, <laughs> Incredible, he's, really. Uh, I'm just scared to turn up here and <laughs> take the trophy, boys. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah. What do you think about him uh, turning to aim point for some improvement on the greens? Yeah, I you're saw, an aim pointer, I saw, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I've um, I've worked a lot on that. Um, I use it a bit differently now. I don't do the fingers, but mm. I use my feet and. Yeah. Um, but but I changed or started using that I think five years ago, four years ago, mm-hmm. and I think it's a great tool to just kind of um, get more committed when you when you're not uh, on the greens to to the lines. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's taking steps all the time. I've heard he's working on his distance, he's mm-hmm. gaining distance, and he's improving. He's just nonstop. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's, 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 he gets yeah. it out on the course, and mm-hmm. that's the challenge. Mm-hmm. It's always been the challenge to because it took him really like a short time to actually get that yeah. to work. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, uh, he just mm-hmm. gets it out on the course. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's awesome! It's Impressive. just awesome mm-hmm. what he's doing. Mm-hmm. 
Tonya, thank you very much for joining us on the Top Golf Podcast. <laughs> yep. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for coming in and sharing everything you've learned within the game and your journey so far. We're very happy to have you on and listen to you and good luck for the future. Thank you. And we will be pulling for you. I hope that you uh, July 21. Soon. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> go out there and get what's yours and good yeah. luck. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining everybody. See you again next week. See ya. Bye.